everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast. In this video, we're going to be continuing our top-down shooter series, and in particular, we're going to be working on the lighting system that we have in the game. So let's roll the intro and let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create some torches in our game to kind of give the scene a little bit of light. But before we actually do that, we need to set up a light renderer. So let's create a new object underneath objects here. And let's call this one OBJ light render. This object is only going to have two events. We'll have a create event for any of our variables. And then we need a draw event because we're going to be drawing to a surface. So we'll start off by declaring our lighting surface and we're going to set it to negative one. We need to set it to negative one so that when we check to see if the surface exists, it will return the correct value. In the draw instance, we will use a surface exists function to see if that surface does exist and that surface equals false. And then we'll come in here and create the surface. Now, when I use a surface create command, I'm just going to be supplying the room width and the room height. And I'm able to get away with this because my room is not that big. Now, I'm going to maximize this because we're going to be adding a lot of code in here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set the target surface. So by default, we're drawing on the application surface. But now I want to draw on the surface that we just created. So we could use a surface set target and just supply the lighting surface itself. Now, I want to draw a black rectangle all over my surface. And the easiest way to do this is by using draw clear alpha. I'll use a color of C black and I will have almost a solid color. I'll just have 80%. Now we're not going to be adding any of the drawing code yet, but at the very end, we need to reset the target surface so we can draw back to the application surface. And now we want to draw the entire surface. So I'm going to be drawing the surface at zero zero, which will mean the zero zero location is going to be in the top left. So my surface is going to take over the entire room. So I can do that by just saying draw underscore surface and I can draw my lighting surface at the X position of zero and the Y position of zero. Now, if I go back to my room level and I click on camera and I add this object into my game here at the top and I hit run, we should see that our screen is much darker than originally before. So the next steps, we're going to be adding some torches to provide lighting. We'll also have some lighting around our character, the bullets and the enemies. Let's create a new object and let's just call this one object torch. We'll make sure that we assign the torch sprite and that's all we actually have to do for this one. If we go back into our room level, we can make a new layer. So I'll just have it right here at the bottom. We'll create a new layer and let's just call this torches. And in with the torches here, I'm just going to add a few of them to my level. All right, now I have two torches in each of my corners. So whatever area I spawn in, we should be able to see the effect right away. Now back in our object lighting, right in between the draw clear alpha and before we reset our target, this is where we're gonna actually have all of our code. Now I'm gonna separate this out into regions. So I'll have the torch region here. So how we're gonna write this is we're gonna say any time that this object encounters a torch, then we're gonna come into this code here. We are going to have a wobble amount. So this will be our circle increasing and decreasing to kind of give it a little bit of animation. We're also going to have a wobble amount X, and this is going to be the image scale basically. So right now we are going to be using a cutout. And if we go to the sprites and we look for a sprite cutout here, you can see it's 64 by 64. We're going to be increasing that by quite a bit. So we're going to start with an image X scale of six, and then we are going to add a random range between the negative wobble and the positive wobble. We're going to do the exact same for the Y position. And now what we need to do is we need to punch out a hole. And that's what we're going to be using that sprite for down here. We are going to set the GPU blend mode and we're going to set the blend mode to subtract. So anything that we draw here will be taken away from the surface. So currently our surface is entirely black. And when we draw with something that's white, we're going to punch a hole through it. So we'll say draw sprite extended. We want to make sure that we draw our light cutout. We are going to be using the subframe of zero because we don't have any animation. We will use the X and Y position of whatever torch we are currently working with. And then we just need to supply the wobble amounts. So this is our image X scale and Y scale. You can see here at the bottom. 
But now all we need to do is finish it off with a zero rotation. We'll use a C color white. And then the alpha, we can either have it as one or we can have it as a different number. Now, right now this will create just a cutout, but what happens if we wanna add some color? So we'll change the blend mode. Instead of subtracting it, we wanna add into the surface. And I'm gonna copy our draw sprite because we don't need to rewrite this. And all we're going to do is we're going to change the color from C white to C red, and we don't need a full alpha amount. We could use something like 30%. And now when we're done everything at the very end, we might as well reset our blend mode back to normal. Now, if we run our game, any torch that this lighting object sees is gonna cut out a little hole and then add some red into it. So you can see we kind of have some red there and it's gonna work on every single torch. Now we need to do the same with just different colors for the player, the bullets, as well as the enemies. We're also gonna be copying and pasting a lot of this code. So it might be beneficial to throw it in a function, but for this episode, we'll just keep copying and pasting. I'm actually gonna take this entire region here. I'm gonna copy and paste it below, and I'm gonna rename this to character. Now, anytime that we, in, we encounter the character, what we wanna do is have a wobble amount, and let's increase this a little bit. Let's decrease our image X scale and Y scale. We are going to just do a cut out, and we'll leave it at C1, and then we will take everything else out as we don't wanna add any light. Now let's do the enemies. And again, let's just paste the torch that we had in here and we will name it enemies. So anytime that we encounter an object enemy, then we'll come into this code here. Again, let's change the wobble. Let's also change our image X and Y scale. And we always wanna cut out that hole wherever our enemy is. Now, what I actually wanna do is I wanna have different colors based off of the different enemies that we're at. So instead of just drawing a normal color sprite here, we're gonna to check to see what the actual object we are on. So we could use a switch statement and we're gonna use a function called asset get index, and this will return what kind of asset we're dealing with. Now we also need to use the object get name function because this will accept the name and this will accept the ID or indicator. So this is how we'll get whether this is an object bat, a slime or a skeleton. So all we have to do is we pass in the object index, which is a built-in function here. And now we can write our switch statement. We say case object underscore enemy and bat. Then we wanna do some stuff in here. We'll copy and paste this for our other three. So we also have a skeleton. And we uh, have a slide. Now we can come down and we can take our cutout here that we're adding in. And for the bat, let's use a purple color. So we'll say C underscore purple. And let's change this to 0 0.5. And for the skeleton, let's use a yellow color, C underscore yellow. And finally, for the slime, we will use a green color. Now with this little bit of code, let's see how many errors we have. One, two, three. So we need another bracket up top, and that should clear everything else. So if I hit F5, we should have lighting on our torches. We have lighting on our character, and if we can find some enemies, we should have some color lights on them as well. Let's see if I can play Shibby out. There's one right there. So we have the purple and the bat, and then the green is the slime. And whenever we destroy one of these objects here, the lighting is going to be automatically delete deleted, so it's no longer showing up. So let's work on adding some lighting into those bullets. Again, I'm gonna to go to the top here, and I'm gonna copy in the character region, and we'll rename this to bullets. Now, I also wanna put the first one here in another region, and I will name this character bullets. And now we're doing the exact same thing, but instead of looking for an object character, what we wanna look for is an object bullet. And the only other thing we need to do here is when we subtract, we need to add a color back in. So we'll use an add function. We'll copy our draw spray extended. And instead of saying C white, we will use C underscore blue and we'll only make it at 50% alpha. Again, let's change our image X scale and Y scale because it's three is a little too big. Now we need to do the same thing for the bullets for the bats, the skeleton, and the slime. So we can copy this region, and we could do something like we did before, but to keep this short, let's actually fly through this, and let's just copy and paste this a bunch of times. If 
All right, so we have the slime bullet. We also have the skeleton bullet. I'll change that to skeleton. Also, we have to have a slime bullet. And then at the top, we have the bat bullet. So anytime we run into any of these bullets, we're gonna cut out a hole, and then we're gonna add it with some color. So now we're done with all the lighting objects. If we hit F5 and we run our game, we should see that our character has lighting. Our bullets now have lighting. The torches have lightings, and if we can find some enemies, let's see here, the next corner, there we go, there's a slime guy or skeleton over here. Whenever they throw a bullet, uh, they also have different lightings as well. Uh, so yeah, our lighting system is complete. It's not 100% perfect because you can see that our lights do go through walls, but I'm okay with that for this game. So with that, we'll end the video here, and our lighting system is complete. Thank you for watching the video, and for those who've decided to support me through Patreon, it really means a lot to me. A special thank you to the following in no particular order. Annie, Darth Wolf, Lucas, Andrea, Ashby, Edward, Sergey, Paul, Blunt B -A Z, Victor, Ian, Bill, and Robert. Again, thank you all for watching the video, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'll see you in the next video.